We've all been playing a worse than most game at one point and thought, huh, I could make something better than this. Oh! <laughs> That's so bad. <laughs> but unlike us uneducated peasants, some people actually have the talent and motivation to follow through with that threat, producing mountains of extra content for hundreds of our favourite games. Mods are truly a magical thing. How else would you describe a lightsaber duel between Futurama's Fry and a Sith Lord Pepper Pig? Or whatever the hell this is. The modding community has come a long way since the early days, which included Load Runner's level editor in 1983, or that same year the infamous Castle Smurfenstein mod of Castle Wolfenstein. They bring new life to old games, whether it's through graphical upgrades, enhanced gameplay mechanics, unearthing cut content, total conversions into something wholly unrecognisable, or fitting Thomas the Tank Engine into every disturbing scenario until he plagues our nightmares. But the fine art of modding requires a good canvas to work with, and some games are notorious for their open design or accompanying modding tools that cater for such incredible user-made creations, or abominations. Yeah! Let's look at some. I'm Ben from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 most mod-friendly video games. Number 10. Mount and Blade Warband this medieval sandbox RPG from 2010 is a textbook modder's dream, an ambitious living world with deep role-playing mechanics and grand battles, but entrenched in dated graphics, obtuse controls and a hard-as-nails difficulty. A flawed classic, but one with huge potential. Throw in over a thousand available mods and this world, along with many others, are at your mercy -er. Sorry. Mercy. To nobody's surprise, Game of Thrones fits perfectly as a setting, with not one, but two high-quality overhauls. Clash of Kings is set during the Five Kings War, complete with plenty of political machinations, while A World of Ice and Fire provides a narrative-focused questline with the impending threat of White Walkers. Naturally, Lord of the Rings crops up too. The Last Days of the Third Age swaps the Middle Ages for Middle Earth, with all your Tolkien-flavoured orcs, elves, dwarves, and hobbitses. There are original settings too, like the high fantasy D&D-esque Fantasy of Calradia, or the grounded low fantasy Prophecy of Pendor. Or for you history nerds, how about touring medieval Europe with Anno Domini 1257, exploring feudal Japan in Gekko Kujo, or turning this ye olde sword swinger into a Victorian era shooter with Between Empires. With so many options, a peasant's life has never looked so appealing. Number 9. Cities Skylines. The travesty of EA's SimCity 2013 would have decommissioned the city building genre single handedly if it weren't for Finnish devs' colossal order saving the day with 2015's Cities Skylines. Avoiding ridiculous always online requirements certainly helped, but their success also stemmed from the wealth of building options, and that incredible choice has grown exponentially through years of modding support, with a staggering 260,000 items available on Steam. Many are simply smaller assets you can use to beautify your magnificent metropolis, but most popular are the quality of life mods. Precision engineering enhances roads and snap points. Move it lets you adjust buildings after placement. Extra landscaping tools lets you sculpt the earth like some civil service god. And there are numerous infrastructure improvements from powered roads to various intersections and a very handy roundabout builder. See America? It just works. There are thousands of fresh maps for you to urbanise or ad agriculturalize, plenty of new scenarios, and accurate recreations of real-world cities too. You can even start on Mars if you're sick of this pandemic-ridden planet and its stupid planning permission laws. Number 8. Stardew Valley for a game developed by just one man, Eric concerned a barone as a love letter to the Harvest Moon series, it's fitting that Stardew Valley has become the home for many other like-minded modders. The chill 2016 farming sim boasts over 6,000 creations on Nexus mods, proving that not all mods need to be about insane 4K grass textures. Although there's still plenty of vegetation mods along with the more <clears throat> a recreational kind of grass, way. Naturally, convenience 
tops the list of necessities, from simple things like movement speed or save anywhere to time savers like the tractor mod or the clever automate letting you set up factory-esque production chains. Yeah, chores are part of the charm, but why wouldn't you skip that infuriating fishing minigame? NPC map locations helps pinpoint runaway villages and additions like gift taste helpers save you from wasting valuable items on ungrateful sods. You can overhaul the visuals with stunning seasonal Japanese buildings or even overgrown fairy buildings, or overhaul the entire game with Stardew Valley Expanded, offering new locations and tons of new content, making a refreshing change for old farmhands. Number 7. Half-Life. It might have been decades since you touched the 1998 classic with or without mods, but chances are you've played a game that began as a Half-Life or Half-Life 2 mod. Counter-Strike? Originally a mod. Team Fortress? Originally a mod. But originally, originally, a Quake mod. Indie darlings like Dear Esther and The Stanley Parable? Both Half-Life mods. Portal? Okay, that one was Valve, but the first game did have big mod energy. Point is, Half-Life didn't just influence the gaming landscape from its own gameplay and narrative, it also inspired countless new community creations thanks to the flexible, versatile Source engine, or Gold SRC engine if you want to get first game in the series about this. You had everything from trippy horror titles like Afraid of Monsters to fantasy RPGs like Master Sword Continued, or even flipping racing games like Half-Life Rally. The sequel carried on the fine modding tradition, the most iconic being Black Mesa in 2012, and incredible fan-made remake of the first game that eventually had a full standalone release in 2020. And then there's Gary's Mod, a sandbox designed for potential modders themselves that itself became a standalone release and spawned other popular mods like Trouble in Terrorist Town and Prop Hunt. Number 6. The Sims 4 Serial mod users often fall into one of two camps, those striving for immersion through new content, streamlined systems, bug fixes, etc., or those who just want to watch the world burn and laugh maniacally. The Sims caters for the first category, certainly, but we all know the series' immense success is because it speaks to our inner psychopath. After all, why shouldn't you create a gratuitously violent interpretation of Schrodinger's Sim? The incredible modding scene continues for The Sims 4, with over 11,000 mods listed on the infamous mod Mod The Sims website, all adding to the weird and wonderful sandbox madness. Staples like MC Command Center and UI Cheats extension help give you more control over your subjects, not to mention enhanced motherload ability. Meaningful Stories combines the emotional inertia and happiness mods, making your Sims' random mood swings more realistic. Likewise, Have Some Personality Please and Wonderful Whims overhauls the personality and relationship systems, and the Explore mod lets them find their own unique adventures. Although if you installed a deadly toddlers, they might yearn for a simple doorless prison for their own safety. Number 5. Doom. While modders owe plenty to Half-Life's Source engine, we wouldn't even have mods if it weren't for Doom's wads. Id Software noticed the popularity of Castle Wolfenstein's Smurftastic mod from 1983, so a decade later designed their iconic shooter with customization in mind, packaging all map assets into WAD files, aka Where's All The Data. Separating wads from the game engine made life easier for budding level designers, so it's no wonder hundreds of new mods have been made for Doom 1 and 2, and are still being made almost 30 years on. Many simply tweet the original maps, seen with Knee Deep in Z Doom or Z Doom if you want to get British about this, or tweet gameplay like with Brutal Doom. Then you have the wilder options like Pirate Doom, which adds a swashbuckling twist, or Ghoul's Forest 3 for a spooky Slenderman style vibe. The Golden Souls 1 and 2 turned your demon slaying shooter into vibrant 3D platformers, complete with collectibles and beautiful hub world. And if that still doesn't blow your mind, what about Total Chaos, created by Wadaholic? in 2018. This is still the core Doom engine, albeit a modernised source port of Doom 2, but hey, really shows how timeless Doom can be. Number 4. Fallout 4. Say what you like about Bethesda releasing buggy titles for the community to fix, perfectly valid criticism, but without their ambitious, open-ended worlds, mod-friendly design and packaged creation kits, mods wouldn't be as widespread as they are today. While Fallout 3 and Obsidian's New Vegas both have extensive libraries, Fallout 4 takes the biscuit for sheer number of mods, currently 38,000 on Nexus mods. 
This is partly because of a newer, updated game engine, but the added sandbox elements like base building and weapon customization helped provide even more toys for modders to dabble with. There are plenty of guns, armor types, or settlement building options for starters. The incredibly in-depth Sim Settlements lets you leave the building minutia up to your settlers, complete with clever SimCity-esque mechanics. If you'd rather wrestle with in-game difficulty than lengthy load orders, Frost Survival Simulator is a tense, atmospheric change of pace or you can crank it up to realistic post-apocalyptic hellscape mode with the Horizon Overhaul. You can really tailor the wasteland to your own specific preferences, and impressively, you could now do it on consoles too. While not the first moddable console game, 2007's Unreal Tournament 3 claims that title, the quality and user experience was vastly superior in Fallout 4, finally inviting console players to the party once reserved for PC only. Number 3. Grand Theft Auto V Remember when we talked about Immersion versus Chaos? Yeah, no prizes for guessing which side GTA V sits on. We know the criminal playground of Los Santos can get pretty weird, but seeing the Incredible Hulk yeeting trucks into oblivion, a gang of me-seeks driving a piano, or biblical level flooding all under the looming shadow of a Star Destroyer, well, it's one of the more notable walks through Vinewood Boulevard you'll have this week. Various all-purpose trainer mods essentially give you a cheat menu to tweak settings and spawn random items, and equally popular are modded characters like Iron Man or Superman that feature their various destructive powers. The Chaos Mod 5 adds further well, chaos, spawning one of 290 random effects every 30 seconds, from vision effects to teleportation to kamikaze traffic. It's not all mayhem and destruction, however. Some mods actually try the immersive route, like GTA RPG, which focuses more on role-playing than rocket-propelled explosives. Or if you want out of this sordid life of crime, you can play as a responsible police officer in LSPD First Response. There are also plenty of stunning graphical upgrades for those chasing the photo -real realistic dream. Number 2. Minecraft The absurdity of modding is best summed up by the crazy few willing to pay thousands for a top-of-the-line PC just so they can run Minecraft. Why? Well, in fairness, it's not this Minecraft, more like this Minecraft. We don't recommend going into heavy debt just to play your blocky sandbox game in 4K ray tracing mode, but with over 75,000 mods out there, most playable on more humble hardware, you'll surely find something for you. Since the early days of staples like Buildcraft and Mo Creatures, Minecraft's modding scene has catered to just about any gameplay style you desire. For exploration, Biomes are Plenty is a staple, adding 80-plus new biome types. Then you have new worlds introduced by Twilight Forest and the Aether, not to mention creating your own dimensions with Mistcraft. You can even go to space in Galactic Craft if you fancy a lovely moonwalk. Decorative mods like Chisel 2 and Bibliocraft are game changers for creative builders. You can be an actual wizard using Thaumcraft or Blood Magic, or maybe a highfalutin industrialist with Mine Factory Reloaded, or a tech guru with computer craft. With all this choice, websites and launches like CurseForge, Technic Pack, and Feed the Beast are a blessing, neatly packaging everything into themed mod packs, easy to install whenever you feel that Pixelmon or Sky Factory itch. Number 1. The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Wow, Skyrim topping a list about mods, how unexpected! Since 2002's Morrowind and the first bundled construction set, The Elder Scrolls has been hugely influential for mainstream modding, and this dedicated community is how Skyrim is still widely playable a decade after its 2011 debut. While Macho Man Dragons and Zoidberg Mud Crabs are undoubtedly entertaining, many mods aim to build on Skyrim's incredible potential for immersion. Between Frostfall, Campfire, Wet and Cold, and I Need, you can add a real survival element to the game, requiring you to eat, drink and sleep, or stave off the cold with proper thermals made from freshly skinned pelts. Mods like Wildcat vastly improve the clunky melee combat, and Fendrix Magic Evolved is one of many incredible magic mods, adding in hundreds of new spell types and effects. Ordinator Perks of Skyrim reworks your skills, opening up dozens of cool new character builds. Graphical mods go without saying, with stunning textures, lighting, and ENB shaders constantly pushing the boundaries of how good this old title can look. Most impressive, though, are the massive content overhauls. 
Falskar adds a whole new lore-friendly island to explore with fully voiced quest lines, and the excellent Moon Path to Elsewhere introduces the homeland of the Khajiit. If you're bored of Skyrim entirely, there's always Enderal, a full conversion of incredible scale and quality providing a compelling story and darker setting with 30 hours of new gameplay. Never mind the 5 million re-releases, this is why Skyrim remains such a constant in gaming and how it became a shining beacon for an insanely talented modding community.